Hey Gregory, I don't know if you can see the lake out there. Might be too cloudy or the sun glare on the lens. You see how it looks like glass, that lake, nice and smooth. That's when I used to like to fish in the 70s. I'd get up early, come down here and toss, toss a fishing line in that lake. Because when the wind kicked up, that lake would get real rough and the tip of your fishing pole bounced up and down so it was harder to tell if you had a fish. Alright, do another video here of good old Lake Smell some more. Up here by a downtown area. This old A-frame restaurant been here forever. And this old Sonny's liquor store used to be called Sonny's. Now they call it Lakeshore. But straight up here where that car, that van and pickup truck was. Used to be a row of buildings there. One was little restaurants and other shops. But they tore it down. I can't remember what year it was. And over here in this field it was a bus stop. Bus bench, yep. And Elsinore had its own private bus system, like the city did, called the Wet's Bus. Yeah, one bus went clockwise around the lake, the other bus went counterclockwise around the lake, and there was a third bus that took you into Riverside. Okay. You know, my old girlfriend used to hang out at that bus stop back there. So, anyways. They took out that bus stop because Riverside RTA took over the area. Bus bus, you go around around the lake for a quarter, and they all parked at this one spot down by the anyways. One day I was hitchhiking. The driver of the bus bus saw me. Pulled over, picked me up, tells me, I'll give you a ride if you go back and tell that guy, go wake him up and tell him where we're at. She was afraid of him. It was a lady bus driver. So, alright. Sometimes when I had nothing to do, didn't have a job no money to go do things on I'd ride the bus I even had bus drivers tell me hey man I'll, you ride with me I'll let you ride all the time for free because they were scared of the people some of the people that rode that bus okay and so I guess they used me as their own private security or something. But, true story. Uh, I can't remember where they kept the buses. One lady ended the shift, went to turn in the bus. There was a group of guys waiting there. She was so scared that she took the bus home. Yeah, she was afraid that she was going to be raped or something like that. You know, there's a lot of heroin addicts back then in Lake Elsinore and cocaine freaks. And, uh, so. Then uh, they 
had the crystal meth problem. When I was a kid growing up, the only thing I ever heard about was pot. So, anyways. Yeah, they have some swim lords in Lake Elsinore. Yes, the schools. The elementary school my kid went to. Oh, man. I had to have girls. And this school had a big, huge lice problem. And they ain't very fun at the get them out you know I used to tell my girls I was going to shave their head bald you know so anyways stop right here and my ex-wife and her drug addict friends would hang out at that bus stop the road was narrow back then okay it wasn't as wide and you see this big empty lot Gregory right there that was full of apartment buildings little small bachelor type places you know had a living room and then you had that room you used at your bedroom and a small kitchen. But I think the cops got that place tore down because it was drug infested. I mean they even built private yards to put fences, wood fence between the buildings. Trying to maybe keep the drug traffic down. Yep. So they would do that. So I guess one day they tore them down. Finally get tired of the stuff. And that group of buildings there, I just you saw on my right when I made that left turn. Well they had a problem with that. They almost got shut down, but they did some remodeling on the buildings. I think they cleared them out. swing a left turn here I don't know if you can see this big empty field here on the left you see a bunch of apartments there over here on the corner was a bunch of apartments well I think that was another set of buildings that the city shut down there's a place on the right they were in such a bad condition, they were renting them out. You could take a vacuum cleaner, stick it to the wall, and suck. I don't know if they used drywall back then or plaster, but you could suck it off with a vacuum cleaner. I mean, it was just crumbling. Okay. My brother in law being a window washer, he knew the owner of those places. Oh, yeah, he's your landlord. And, uh, yeah. He, him and his wife, they were building a three million dollar house. I mean, they did all the custom window works themselves. You know, leaded windows were, you know, little squares leaded together and stuff. Maybe like a diamond, crystal type window. Oh yeah, real expensive windows. Yep. Yeah, this building here, they, they remodeled it. They used to be John Service Center. Secondhand appliances. 
that's where the serial killer worked. Yep. They all released it in the news. There. It used, to be a, it used to be a bunch of bars. Can't remember which building it was. Here on the right. It used to be a Firestone place. It was kind of cool. It wasn't to do with tires, but you get any kind of uh, like fishing supplies there, some other stuff they had. I think my dad got parts for his chainsaw there. Yep. That's the old house of chimes. They call it the house of chimes. Now, see all the cars are parked here on the right? Well, parking back then wasn't that way. They changed the parking around, make the sidewalk bigger. You park your car in at an angle right there. Yep. This was the outflow channel for the lake during the 1980 when it flooded over. They cut the town in half with a backhoe. And they built uh, a little tiny bridge. No cars can go through it, cross it. So they had to, this is where people could walk. I don't know who it was, but the guy and his wife was pretty uh, well known. I don't know, it was him or his wife did it. They had a little sports car. They tried.